I'm actually going to stick this And up. this is Professor Wilson and doing a ghost dissection. What is a ghost? <laughs> Um, well, this is a, an, uh, let me talk about the purposes of our lab today, and then we will reveal the, the ghostly secrets. The purposes of this particular lab um, are to, to deal with one of the hardest concepts for anatomy and physiology students, and that is shifting your two-dimensional and three-dimensional perceptions of objects. And one of the things you're going to have to do in the health professions at some point is be able to look at a diagram something like this and realize that this came from an arm and try and determine where in the arm did this particular diagram or radiograph, um, where did it come from. And that's very difficult. We don't use those parts of our brains very often, and so this is to help us practice that. It also helps us practice using medical terminology or directional terminology um, the way it would be used, applied in the medical field. So anterior, uh, posterior, superior, inferior, superficial, and deep. And this is something you need to start practicing. So here comes our ghost. One of the things that this lab has us do is do some our first dissection on a ghost. This particular little ghost is uh, created from some type of a gelatin. In this case, this one's made out of nutrient agar. Um, some leftovers from our microbiology program, and we don't want stuff to go to waste, so we're, we're trying to be um, resourceful. This little ghost has some features that help us d determine where the right and the left hand are on this ghost, and it's important to remember as you are working with a patient or with a specimen that the right and left that are referred to in instructions are the ghost's right and left, not your right and left. So while this is my right hand, this is the ghost's left upper appendage, okay? So that's an important thing to practice as well. Um, in this lab, the other thing that we're testing is how well can you follow directions? And it's very, very important that you read every direction in here carefully. Um, this is going to help you determine what your correct um, um, actions to take on your ghost. First, I want to review some of our dissect dissecting tools or implements. Um, this, which some people might call a tweezer, is a forcep. We may or may not use it today, but at some point you will be using them. This is one of my favorite instruments. These are dissecting needles or teasing needles. Uh, I like having a couple of them, kind of like chopsticks. If you're going to use one, you may need another one to help get in there and get into a small area. This is another one of my favorites. This one works particularly well for the nervous and the um, circulatory system. This is a blunt probe. Very useful, although we may not use it much today. This is an important instrument. This is a scalpel. They work best when they're sharp. We try to keep ours sharpened. Um, we also have today an, another cutting device. This is just a plastic um, utility, a, a knife, um, you know, cutlery. Um, and we're going to use this more like a spatula. Because our ghost is agar and it's gelatinous and a little jiggly, there are times when we have to move some things around, and this has a little broader blade and gives more support. So. I'm going to show you a couple things, but I'm not going to do the whole lab for you because you have to learn how to follow those directions. But one of the things that it calls for in here is it's going to ask you to make a cut through the most superior organ in your ghost. Now, the organs in these ghosts, I want to let you know, um, this is um, all food-grade material. It's all non-toxic. Technically, a person could eat one of these and wouldn't harm them. We have not made them in aseptic conditions, so you know we haven't followed... USDA food safety rules, but in other words, it's not going to harm you to touch it. I don't have gloves on today. You can see that, and I can touch this. Um, unless you're worried that you have some sensitive skin and may have an allergy, you should be able to do this barehanded. If you have a very sensitive gag reflex and you may um, feel a little nauseated by touching jello or gelatinous things, it's kind of like a jello jiggler consistency, then you may want to use some gloves, and that will help you get practice in working with gloves, and it's, it's not a bad idea. So if I, um, when I look in here, you can see vaguely that there seems to be a shape of something up here in what we would call behind this face, what we might call a cranial area or a cephalic area. Down here, there seems to be something floating around where, you know, a human being might have something like a lung. Who knows what ghosts have? But our ghosts have some organs that seem to be a little similar to ours. There's some pasta or something looking down here that represents some sort of a digestive tract, maybe intestines. So we want to uh, make an, a uh, cut through, an incision through the most superior organ. What we're going to do is 
create a cross section very similar to the picture I showed you here, but through the upper um, extremity of this ghost. A couple of pointers. When you cut through this jello and you get to, I'm gonna, there's an organ under here, I can see something, some kind of shadow. I'm going to put my dissecting needle right down through that organ and into my tray so that when I start to do my cutting and I hit that organ, I will not necessarily um, damage it too much. The other thing is, as you cut through a tissue, so I'm going to try and get this on a line here, uh, about right here. When I cut through a tissue, I want to be trying to do as little damage as possible. A sawing action is generally helpful, especially if you hit something with a different consistency. If I were to just take this and go right through there like I was, you know, slicing a, I don't know what, slicing a piece of fruit, I might smash the internal material that's in there. So I'm going to be sawing like you do when you cut a tomato and you don't want to squish all the innards. Okay. So I have cut through completely here. Now, the next set in the directions suggests that you do um, a second cut inferior to this one by one centimeter. The squares on your grid here are a centimeter. However, I find that because these are a little bit, you know, soft and they're a little gelatinous, um, that if I give it a little more than a centimeter, I have a little bit sturdier cross section to remove. So when you make your cut, you might go one box, so about here, well, maybe I'm just going to go just a little bit bigger than that, just to make my cross section a little bit, a little bit bigger. I'm going to kind of hold my dissecting or teasing needle steady there, and I'm going to make my cut. I can feel something in there that's a little firmer. Can't quite see it, but I can kind of feel it. So I'm going to be careful as I cut through that. All right, I now have a section of my ghost. You're going to have to read the next step in the directions and determine exactly what to do. In order to do this, it says that you're going to have to remove this and you're going to place it flat on the, you're going to tip it and place it flat on the paper. But which direction you're going to tip it depends on how, you know, what your instructions say. And I want you to be the person that interprets that, not me. So what I'm going to do is determine, am I going to flip it this way or am I going to flip it this way? Whichever one I'm going to flip it on, I'm going to put my wider blade. So I'm just, I'm not even reading the directions right now. I'm just going to stick this in here. And I'm going to try and grab right here with my scalpel. And I'm going to slide my cross section out into an area where I can flip it. Now my ghost is in the way a little bit, so I'm going to just slide my ghost down a little bit out of the way. And now I have to flip my cross section. Um, if, if if I yeah so so we're just gonna um, we're just gonna do this so that you you're gonna have to figure out how to flip it but in order to flip it put your broad your broad instrument on the side you're gonna flip onto and your your scal your scalpel will just tip it on there and now we have a nice cross section I'm gonna kind of put it back in here for you to look at um, yours may not look like mine depends on what your directions say but you can see right here that there is some kind of a structure what might be we might think of as something like a brain you know this might be the ghost's brain um, in reality I'll tell you for our ghosts we made these brains out of cauliflower so you can tell that that's that's there and when you draw your sketch you want to make sure that you indicate properly label um, what side um, you know what side is this side what is that called what is this side called and uh, make sure that it's visible that you can see that structure in there um, you're going to have to do that again in another um, place on the ghost in a, um, an organ-rich area. So pick any other place in that ghost where it looks like there may be several different organs, and you're going to do the same thing. So again, read your directions carefully. You're going to have to recognize your anatomical... Um, read your directions carefully. Recognize your anatomical um, terminology used properly. Be sure to do your sketches. One of the things that will help you with your sketching is that the, the grid that you will have on your paper will be the same grid that we have provided here in the tray. So if your ghost is 10 squares tall on here, it should be 10 squares tall on your paper. I have many students who say to me, oh, I can't draw. But if you can write, you can draw. 
And um, I'll give you a little hint. One thing that some art teachers do to help their students learn to be better at rendering a, an illustration is um, your brain will do a better job drawing something that you place upside down. So if you, to turn, if you turn your tray around when you do your drawing, okay, and then, of course, turn your paper around so your paper lines up with the tray, and then draw, draw the ghost that you see upside down, you will get a better drawing than if you leave your tray right side up. Now, some people ask me why that is. Because your, your brain is a huge library of images. It stores um, the images of what you've seen as ghosts before, Casper or whatever the ghosts you've seen. And when, when somebody tells you this is a ghost, your brain conjures up a whole bunch of ghost images. That's what you're going to be trying to draw on the paper. But if it's upside down, your brain probably doesn't know what an upside down ghost looks like, and so it has to draw exactly what's in front of it. So you must try the drawing. You must practice your terminology. You must try to learn the difference between a two-dimensional representation and that three-dimensional object. So good luck. Be sure to ask us questions. More time if you need it. Just okay. nope, I think, I think okay. we're good. I think you're